Work holding is truly one of the most important aspects to learning CNC machining or manufacturing in general. If you want to make a part faster, you've got to hold it with more rigidity. If you want to make it accurate, you've got to make sure that your fixtures aren't moving around or they're not being uh, affected by thermal influence, by the heat and the cold. On this table here, I've got a whole wide array of different options to hold on to different pieces of work. And today I'm going to do my very best to kind of give you guys a crash course in CNC machining, work holding for CNC machining. The truth is a master class would probably take hours and hours, and I'm not even sure that I'm the guy that's qualified enough to teach you guys a true master class. But a crash course, I think I can manage that. So with that said, the first thing you see here on the table is a good old fashioned machinist vise. Now this is a CNC vise, and what makes this vise a little bit different from a traditional vise is that it can be turned on its side because the edges are actually machined flat. You see in this vise, I just have this piece of round stock. We make mold cavities here, and I think, this, I think this is worth mentioning. This isn't really a dedicated job machining job shop. We do job shop some work from time to time, but primarily we're a manufacturing business that has a machine shop to make our own tooling. So, so just, I just wanna give you guys that filter, that lens through which to watch this video. So this is a small, a small vise. This vise was purchased specifically because of the length. This fits perfectly in our Sile X7. So this is the vise that is dedicated for the X7. The X7 can do, go through all of its travels, full, full negative Y, full positive Y, you know, full negative Y without running into the way covers in the back of the machine in the column, full positive Y without running into the door when the vise is all the way open. So just that's why I chose this vise. In it, you see, I've got this round piece of P20 tool steel and it's got some features in it. This is being held in this vise with one of my absolute favorite work holding method and it's known as a soft jaw. So I'm going to take this fixture out of here for now. I'm going to set this down on, I'm going to take this, this part out of here. It's kind of heavy. I'm going to set it down here on this other piece. All this is, all these soft jaws are, are two pieces of aluminum. You can buy these from Monster Jaws for 10 bucks. By the way, this video is brought to you by Sile Machine Tool and nobody else. So there's no endorsements, no affiliate links, no nothing like that. Soft jaws are incredibly useful. And generally speaking, when you hear someone talking about a soft jaw, it's usually a piece of material that's been cut that's softer than what you're holding. And many times they're cut to shape to hold the parts that you're making. So you can see here, we have this one. And these were actually in this vise at one point in time like this, and they held a bunch of aluminum parts trays. And so instead of making one, instead of using one set of six inch jaws, we used this longer set to be able to hold more parts to so kind of increase our work holding density. That's another term that we're gonna talk about as we, as we go through this video. So a vise is incredibly useful. Traditionally, your part would sit down on the bed of the vise. And if it can't, you would use something like these parallels that would go in here. And then when you put your part in here, it would sit directly on the parallels, right? What happens when you can't use a vise? Okay, a vise is great, but it's not great for round things. It's not great for things that have organic shapes. Uh, there are many times when a vise just falls short. And so where do you go from there? And so that's when you start getting into, how would you hold a super thin piece of plastic or a super thin, let's say a one millimeter th thick piece of aluminum or copper? You probably wouldn't snag it in a vise because you'd smash it and bow it. And so that's where you come into some of these other options. So directly in front of this vise, we have the Pearson work holding system. So let me move this vise. We'll pull the Pearson work holding system and we'll talk about some of uh, the unique features that it offers. This next option, it's definitely not the cheapest form of work holding, but it is definitely one of the most useful. And there are all kinds of iterations out there. And so I don't want you guys to feel like I'm really endorsing this stuff. I'm just trying to share it with you guys. This is a Pearson pallet system. This is the pro pallet system and these two little gadgets here are called the brake. And what they do is they have spring pressure in them, a huge amount of spring pressure. And when you put a fixture onto the pallet system, it bites in right here. And then it has these pads that are ground accurately. And so it kind of holds everything down nice and tight. I guess we'll start with this fixture. You guys saw that we did side one of our mold cavities in a vise. It's a good old fashioned vise. We machine them flat. We drill them, we, we thread mill them, 
we put a big chamfer on them, and then they go onto a fixture like this where we bolt through the bottom. And this is a very common way to make mold components. We just run some bolts right through the bottom of this. It has one round pin and one diamond pin. This is called a master locator, and this is an angular locator. And this repeats within a few ten thousandths of an inch, which is actually really good. And so this is a dedicated fixture to hold on to our mold cavities. But, but what we talked about earlier was what if we had a one millimeter thick sheet of copper or aluminum? And that's where a tool like this comes in. This is a vacuum pallet or a vacuum holding system, also from Pearson Work Holding. They sell a couple of versions of this. They sell one like this that actually goes on the pallet system or they sell this as a standalone unit. But this can go down onto the pallet system and then vacuum will hold your part down. So incredibly useful way for holding lightweight, thin objects, especially those that are non-magnetic. We're gonna talk about magnets here in just a little bit. Uh, and then what makes the Pearson system so unique is that Jay has all kinds of other options for this thing. This was just a blank piece of aluminum that we machined into our own fixture. This piece over here that we just showed you guys was a dedicated vacuum pallet. This, this one, I have a couple of these because we have the mini pallet system too. This is just a fixture plate that is sold actually by, actually by another company and it goes on here and it has a small modular vise on here. And so this system is incredibly uh, universal or versatile in its nature. It can be used to run a good old fashioned fixture plate so that you can use something like a toe clamp. You can put a couple of bolts in here and, and hold something down that's nice and snug with a couple of nuts and bolts. You can use a vacuum system. Obviously you can use the mod vise. You can build your own custom fixtures that come on and off with incredible repeatability. The real strength in a pallet system like this one from Pearson or any of the other brands that are out there. There's all kinds of brands of companies that make stuff like this. You can go look up Car Lane or some of the other manufacturers that make pallet systems. And what makes something like this so powerful and so unique is that the idea is that you bolt it into the machine and you just leave it there. It just, the base should never, ideally, the base will never come out. The only thing I would change about this pallet system, if, if it were up to me, I wish it came with a calibration tool so that when you installed it in the machine, you could align it flawlessly with a calibration tool. Because if, you, if, if this thing ever moves and you build a new pallet or a new whatever, uh, none, you start having to move it around when you have problems. Or if it ever moves and you build new fixtures, that's a problem. Fair enough, you know, suffice to say. So. Let me get this out of the way and we'll move on to some of the other work holding options here on the table. Our next piece of work holding, you're way more likely to see on a lathe than you would inside of a CNC mill, but it's a chuck. Now this one, if you guys look carefully, you see it has holes because this is a front mount chuck, which means you can bolt through the face of it into a fixture plate. So if you had a, just a good old fashioned fixture plate, something like this on the, mill, on the bed of your mill, you could lift this chuck up and you could bolt it right down and then you could bolt it to the table. I guess technically you could probably bolt the chuck directly to the table using T-nuts, but this is a great way for holding small round parts or even large round parts depending on the chuck. We actually have three different versions. This is a small uh, six jaw self-centering chuck. We have a larger three jaw and we have a really big, like an eight or, I think it's an eight inch four jaw, which allows you to pull things off center or hold things that aren't necessarily round. And so four jaw chucks are incredibly useful, but there was only so much room on this table, so bear with me. A great way to hold round stuff and a great way to increase the work holding density. Instead of having a great big chuck or a great big vise that takes up a huge amount of wide travel, you could literally have two round chucks in the same location as one traditional vise, depending on what you're going for there. So I'm a big fan of using, using the chuck on the CNC mill. The one other work holding method that is used a fair bit here is a magnetic option. 
Now you guys might be used to seeing magnetic chucks in things like surface grinders or uh, electrical discharge machining centers because there's very, very little tool pressure. You're not gonna move a part on an EDM machine. The part doesn't even make contact. And when you're using a surface grinder, you're generally only taking a couple of 10 thousandths or maybe a, maybe a thousandth at a time off of a part. So there just isn't a lot of force. But milling with a, with a magnetic chuck, the answer is yes. I've actually made a few different tools. In fact, one of the tools that's out in the shop right now uh, in production was made right here on this small magnetic chuck in our Silex 7. And this is just a small magnetic chuck. It has a great big Allen wrench that I don't have with me and you just flip it back and forth and it, it either magnetizes or demagnetizes and it holds stuff really tight. It might have, there's a little bit of residual magnetism in there, but when you tighten this thing down, it holds incredibly, uh, it holds with an incredibly high amount of force. And the more surface area you have, the more force it holds with. So if you wanted to hold on to something that's, for instance, uh, we made a mold base that was actually quite long. It was actually bigger. Uh, it was so big that we couldn't actually hold on to, we couldn't actually hold on to it with a, like a vise. Using a vise would have raised everything up quite a bit and we weren't able to get to any of the outside edges. And so when we actually used this magnetic chuck, we made the, the mold base kind of like this and we were able to go around the outside with, and we were able to go all the way past the bottom. So we were able to go beyond the bottom of the part on the three edges that overhung the magnetic chuck. And so these are incredibly useful. I will say this, when you start, when you start to deviate from a good old fashioned vise, and you're gonna be putting more tool pressure and more force is gonna be generated in the cut, it's really time to be, to know your part, know your tool path, know your feeds and speeds. Because if you guys were to say clamp down this piece of steel onto this, there's a limit. There's gonna be a limit to how much tool pressure you can apply to this part before you start to see it move and you scrap your part or crash your machine or something crazy goes wild. So I would definitely say that mag magnetism is an awesome option it's definitely, it's definitely not for the faint of heart, and I would approach it from the slower, easy going side. I would, I would approach it gently rather than kind of going hard on your tool pass. Program with a, a more cautious surface footage, program with a more cautious uh, feed per tooth and uh, chip load, things like that. I think it just, it's safer to approach. So we do use this, we, we have used this quite a bit and it's been a great option. When you get into multi-axis machining, there's a whole different generation of vices. Actually, I guess I would say there's a different generation of work holding for multi-axis machining. So this is a vice that was actually sent to me a, a long time ago because we were gonna run this on our Akuma M560. This is actually a prototype of a now in production vice from M-Lock work holding. I believe it's made in Poland. It's super high quality stuff, super good stuff. If you guys uh, the, the, the guy that runs it, his name is Alexander, if I remember correctly, super nice guy. And you can see that this is actually on a fixture plate that was made for our Haas TRT210. So we actually use this five axis, we use this vise, which is a self-centering vise for our for five axis machine work on our TRT210, even though we don't have the Akuma anymore. Um, but these are nice because when you're tipping your part around in all kinds of different orientations, they give additional clearance to your tools and tool holders. Uh, they are not as rigid as a good old fashioned Kurt DX6 or something like that. And the camera probably won't pick this up, but most of these vices have dovetails right here. And so if you take your part, your raw stock, and you prep it with a dovetail cutter, when you tighten it up into a vise like this, it's incredibly rigid. It's incredible. It's it's inc incredibly unlikely that you'll pull it out of the vice jaws, okay? Other tools that we've used for multi-axis work holding, this is a, a System 3R. Now this is stuff that you guys probably won't see too much in the world of CNC machining, especially not entry level or hobby machining. But when you're cutting electrodes for EDM work, here's an example of that. Uh, there's a, another fixture plate. But you, you have a few components here. You have what's called the drawbar. 
This is a drawbar. This is called a pallet. This is a 54 millimeter pallet. And then your, this is all bolted to this piece of aluminum, which was designed on a, it was designed and cut on the five axis machine. Uh, and you see, this one's actually been nipped, it looks like here with, with an end mill at some point, but see it's been drilled and tapped in a couple of different locations for set screws. And this is a piece of graphite. And what happens is you put this draw bar into this pallet, you put the pallet onto a chuck like this, and then you use a little bar like this, and you tighten it up, and now this thing is, it's in there, it's nice and rigid, and now when you want to move this thing around or in different orientations to drill and tap, you're good to go. When you pull this thing out of your CNC machine after you've cut your electrode into whatever shape it is you want, this then goes up into the electrical discharge machining center, and it goes and it will actually burn the pocket or the feature or whatever uh, right from the, from the EDM machine. So basically, this is kind of like the equivalent of a Cat 40 tool holder with an end mill in it. I guess that's the best analogy I would have. But this is, this is a brand called System 3R or System 3R compatible. The other brands that you would see out there are something like Eroa. So if you guys watch John Grimsmo and you watch him use his Kern, I believe, I believe John uses Eroa. Yeah. Yeah. My, my camera guy's giving me, the, giving me the nod. So Grimsmo uses Eroa. This is System 3R. Uh, both are basically systems for holding, for, for either work holding and or tool holding, and uh, works works really well. So we'll get this out of the way. We've covered the bulk of of the tools we have here on the shelf or here on the table. We're starting to finally wind this thing up. There's a few options left here on the table. Toe clamps are super common. Anything that you're holding on your table on a CNC machine, it's incredibly common to use something like a toe clamp. And generally what happens is you, you pick a clamp that has the right distance, you pick a stud, and there's no T-nuts in here, uh, but you get the idea. If this goes down into a T-nut. Then you set the height with something like this. And what you do is you hold your part just like this. There are other options. There are things like this, like machinist jacks that are adjustable. And anytime you're using toe clamps, I would just, I would just say, I would caution you uh, in two ways. Number one, try to keep that clamp as level as you can. You don't want crazy angles going on. It never ends up well. That's the first thing. The second thing is if you're going to clamp onto something, especially a finished surface, put something underneath the toe clamp. Put a little piece of aluminum, a little piece of copper, whatever you have. Uh, I'd be lying to you if I, if I didn't tell you that I have injured some pieces from time to time because I get into a rush, I clamp it down, and then there's little nick marks in there where I've clamped it down with a hardened toe clamp. So, so toe clamps are, are, are incredibly useful. There are all kinds of specialty items that are out there. Uh, things like this 5C collet holder, which you might hold into a, in, most likely in a vise. And so it lets you hold precision round stock and it lets you index parts perfectly at 90 degrees. So if you had a little round stock that you wanted to machine and you wanted to hit it with four different corners or you wanted to hit the top and the bottom perfectly accurately and you don't have a rotary, holding a little 5C collet block in a vise is an incredibly easy way to accomplish that. Good old fashioned V-blocks so that if you do have something that's round and you want to put a pocket in it or something like that, you could then use something like this along with a couple of toe clamps at the end to, to machine that. Super, these are all dirt cheap, inexpensive items. Like these little V-blocks are probably like 10 bucks. They cost next to nothing. There's, there's bigger, badder versions of this. This is one that I got uh, from, from Shars and uh, we've used it from time to time. And I wouldn't say last, I'll share this with you. This is something called uh, the Quadrilel. And what it is, it's a ball bearing in between a couple of plates and what it does is it lets you clamp something into a vise uh, and it lets the front clamping jaw deform to match the part. It's, it's, it's not cheap, it's about a hundred bucks I think if I remember correctly. I bought this thing online. Uh, you can, someone asked can you just use a ball bearing? Yes, yes you can use a ball bearing but I don't think you'd have as much holding force. What I probably should be saying right now is that there's no end to work holding. It's literally an infinitely deep sea 
of ingenuity from people all over the globe, which is probably why I, I like it so much. This is a, a, a method that, that I see a lot of guys kind of kind of poo-poo quite a bit. I don't really use this a lot. But you can put a layer of masking tape down on your surface and then a layer of masking tape on your part and then you can glue it down. And if, the, if there's enough surface area of this, I've, I've actually seen this work many, many times, which just further highlights the fact that there's no level, uh, there's no end to the amount of human ingenuity that goes into CNC machining. I hope me taking you guys through some of these different work holding options, I hope you guys learned a little bit. Uh, I hope, hopefully maybe it made you guys laugh. I've never claimed to be uh, you know, the ultimate CNC or machining expert. What I've kind of learned in my manufacturing business is that I want to learn quickly. I want to learn the things that are very much important to me. And I know that there's always more to learn. So with that said, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. All right, now that the other camera's off, I probably sound pretty far away, but since you're sticking around, I'll show you one more gadget. This is something that I was gonna cover, but I thought it was a little bit too specialized. This was from Colton Industrial. I bought this online. These are magnetic one, two, three blocks, and you buy them, and they have holes on all sides to receive magnets, and it has some extra magnets right here, and they're pretty trick. They just allow you to do some setups. Sometimes it just seems like you need a third hand when you're setting up a job, and this, is pretty trick because it allows the, the one, two, three block to kind of attach itself to the work or locate itself. And just, like I said, these guys, there's no end to human ingenuity. Now let's go make some chips.